So when I first moved to Western North Carolina, and I was with all these farmers, oh yeah, we're natural and we're sustainable. I'm like, so what kind of chickens do you raise? They say, well, we do Cornish cross, and we do this, this. and they're hybrids that, that uh, they cannot naturally reproduce. Well, I said, so you're using a bird, and you're dependent upon an outside resource, outside of Western North Carolina. It's not locally bred and or, or, developed or hatched here. So you're dependent upon these big hatcheries, and you call yourself sustainable? Something wrong with that picture, okay? So it's really, really important you understand. We talk about uh, the, the industrialized bird. Now let me give you a couple other thoughts, and then I'll stop, and we'll have a little because I see your, some of your brains are really cranked up here. Another disadvantage: they're bred for good results. I already mentioned that. Thirdly, genetics are controlled. I already explained that to you. Four, physical complications. All right. 100% of all the tests that have been done, uh, a, a bunch of universities, that NC State was involved in it, that when the Cornish cross is on its back, almost 100% of the time, it's heart related. So what you have in this chicken that's, and has, is genetically engineered to grow fast, is it's, it's, its body grows faster than its bone structure and its organs. So, um, it, and so the, uh, that bird's growing so fast that heart can't keep up with the, with, the, with the growth, and so they die. So they have all of these, and you can ask anybody who's raised Cornish cross, especially in large numbers, the, uh, the way they walk, okay, the bigger they get, uh, the harder it is for them to walk. That's why it's useless to put them out to pasture. The, the millions of turkeys that we raised at diesel, the bigger they got, you know, the, more, the harder it was for them to walk, okay? And, uh, and so you have all of these physical complications. The fourth thing is, and I really want you to think about this, is that I really believe that genetics have a huge impact on welfare. Let me illustrate it this way. We, uh, we've done, there's been a few uh, experiments that have been done where you take medicated feed for the baby chicks, and the medication is to help relieve them of pain and a non-medicated feed. So when they're, and, and they were, as these birds grew, they actually ate more of the medicated feed and some of the experiments, and some of this is still going on at Kansas State and a few other places, showing that these birds are growing so quickly they're actually in pain. Now, there's something wrong with that picture, okay? And, uh, and so those are some disadvantages when you talk about the industrial, the industrial uh, chickens and turkeys. So let me, um, Let's uh, raise your hand. Let's talk here, and what are your thoughts? And Pat, go ahead. Is that why they want to bring arsenic to the market? Is for to alleviate the pain? Uh, I, I don't. I don't know for sure the answer to that. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Well, what about the painkiller in the meat you eat? Right. Well, let me just tell you this. Um, one of our uh, one of the classes tomorrow. Go ahead. Okay. He said. Uh, <laughs> The trace amounts of the uh, of the of the pharmaceutical in the actual meat you buy packaged in the store. Right. So you're saying how does that affect us? Sure. Okay. And and uh, let me just encourage you to go to the if you're interested in this further. One of our farmers uh, locally here actually is over in the Piedmont, but he's going to do feeds and feeding tomorrow uh, for in the poultry trap. Definitely, I don't have time to elaborate on this morning, but what that bird eat definitely affects how. Mm -hmm what goes into your system, okay? And, and so there, there are other, now let me also clarify something. There are no hormones fed to chickens. It's against the law, okay? So when you see a no hormone on a label, okay? No hormones on the label, it's actually, did I say something in a rather stupid way? No, no, Okay. Yeah, so what I want you to understand is birds what makes them grow fast is 100% genetics, okay? It's all genetics, all right? Uh, I just returned home from Penn State, um, and I spent about six hours with a 90-year-old poultry geneticist. And one of my mentors, Frank Reese, and he said, Jim, you got to go see this guy before he's gone. And I spent six hours with him, and he did uh, poultry genetics at Penn State for over 50 years and a phenomenal guy, and uh, he, my brain's still reeling from just my conversation with him. 
But it, genetics What's his name? It, is his name's Ed Buss, B U S S, and um, and so <coughs> genetics are what caused the bird to go crickly. Yes, question. Medicaid fee. Okay, so I ordered my little bird box. Uh huh. And, and I go to my tractor supply. Yes. I mean, that's all I have in my area. Okay. And there it is. The producer's pride, which doesn't have a Medicaid label. And there's Purina, which doesn't have Medicaid label. And you read the label, and it says it's just a city of staff. Job. <laughs> is this the kind of medication you're talking about? Well. Or do the big guys get something different? Yeah. Now, I'm going to make a statement here, and during the break, you can connect with Harvey, find Jennifer, find me, uh, find Pat. Let me just suggest to you, uh, in, in 30 plus years of raising quality standard red poultry, okay, uh, I have never been an advocate of medicated feed. Never. And if you have genetically good birds, with uh, a good uh, immune system, all right, you will not have the, a lot of the issues that you face with the lesser quality of an industrialized bird or even a hatchery bird. Okay, so I don't recommend medicated feed. Uh, now, I will also tell you that even though I, in, in the midst of not recommending, uh, don't recommend medicated feed, I also tell you that you need to make sure you've got good stock. Good breeding stock, uh, where those birds come from, and, and I'm going to answer that before we take the break here this morning on, on okay, how do we address this stock issue. So, I don't know if I'm answering your question directly, but, um, but I would encourage you to not use medicated feed, okay? Other questions about this subject here, of, of industrial, understanding how to identify the birds, yes? This just, uh, <coughs> I don't know if it's related to the way to say for later, but uh, as far as organic or a naturally grown uh, poultry, this feed is supplied. Right. I mean, you get into the Monsanto seeds and right. so on. So, is that, you know, the type yeah, of Yeah, let me, let me address it real quickly. All right. Two things about that, and then I'm going to show you some pictures of some good birds. All right. First of all, I worked in the organic industry, you know, industry side, and people got a lot of misunderstandings about organic birds. Okay, when if somebody comes and says to me, "Jim, I want an organic turkey," or "I want an organic chicken," I say, "What do you mean by that?" They say, "I want to know how the birds treat it." I'm like, organic has nothing to do with welfare. <laughs> nothing to do with the welfare of the bird. I'll illustrate it this way. At a 25,000 square foot barn at the turkey company I worked for, we would have 8,000 toms. Okay, it was a natural turkey. Right next to it, another 25,000 square foot building with 8,000 toms, and they were all organic turkeys. There's only two differences between the two barns. One is there's no antibiotics that are fed to the organic turkeys. And there's a, and it's a certified organic feed. Those are the only two things. They are both grown in confinement. They're both a genetically engineered bird that is suffering as it grows. Okay, so um, they don't get to necessarily go outside or inside, and that's a whole other thing. We're not going to really go down that road um, today. But so um, now there is a movement for the organic uh, chicken and organic feed. And we're spending, uh, we have a, a Carolina Heritage Poultry Coalition. We're spending a lot of time working on this feed issue and addressing it. And, and one of the biggest, there is the organic movement, and a lot of our farmers are going, we're not going to go down that road because of the cost of the feed. But I have a bunch of, a few other farmers who are saying, we're getting feed that's non-GMO and no soy. Okay? No soy. All right? If you want to learn, do some reading. I'm still in this whole learning curve too on soy. But anyway, so, but, um, and uh, one of our farmers, he's actually going to be at OGS tomorrow. He, he fed a, a non GMO, no soy feed, and uh, he averaged six to seven dollars a pound for his Buckeyes in the Piedmont. That's uh, north of Charlotte, the Charlotte area. And, uh, and a huge market niche for that. Okay. So, um, all right, Harvey, would you mind?
pushing the arrow. And uh, let me show you a couple of chickens here. All right, this is this is a barred Plymouth Rock. How many of you have ever seen one of these or have one in your backyard? Okay. Now this is a, this is a barred Plymouth Rock. I want you to notice a few things about him. One is he's probably a lot larger than a lot of the ones that are in the backyards of uh, a lot of fanciers. All right. He also has very, very distinct barring. A bar of Plymouth Rock is similar color to the Dominique. Uh, some of you may know that as the Dominecker, all right? The, the proper name is the Dominique. The Dominique and the bar of Plymouth Rock, one of the first two birds that were admitted to the standard of perfection. So an enormous amount of history on this bird in the United States, okay? Next one, Harvey. Here's another male. I want you to see, this is uh, of the Plymouth Rocks, or if you want to make note of this, all American breeds are primarily a dual purpose breed. Okay? The Plymouth Rock is you, dual purpose, means it's for eggs and for meat. Okay? So, this guy, uh, it's just another male. I want you to, to kind of see uh, the depth of, of his chest and the size and um, we have uh, flocks that we're using for breeding in our uh, Heritage Poultry Coalition of uh, phenomenal birds that come out of a flock in, in Kenley, North Carolina, actually. And, um, and, and beautiful carcasses for eating and good, good production on them. All right, next picture. This is a young female. Uh, there's a white one in the background. You can continue, Harvey. Flock with some barred rocks there. Next. I want here. I just want you to see how distinct that the uh, the barring is on the bird. Okay, that's beautiful Plymouth Rock barring right there. I put good, but I like beautiful better. All right, next slide. These are partridge Plymouth Rocks. Now keep in mind, if you look at the standard, you'll have in Plymouth Rocks you'll have white ones, black ones, buff rocks, partridge rocks, blue rocks, same breed, bunch of colors. All right. This is the partridge rock. This is a flock actually, Harvey, from up in, in Virginia. And, uh, uh, well, what's his name? Stanley, the old man that passed away. Uh, can't remember his name. Anyways, this is, uh, this is a, an excellent flock of partridge Plymouth rocks. Next slide. Anybody know what these are? Leghorns. Yeah, Froghorn, Leghorn, you heard that? Okay, for all you new beginners, you might have to use a cartoon character to kind of tie you in, get you connected, all right? So, now, uh, go to the next slide, Harvey. I want you to notice, if I had a, a, one of my little red pointers, <coughs> remember this, the back half, well, let me back up. Uh, a Leghorn, anybody have any idea what, is it primarily a meat bird or an egg layer or both? Egg, product, egg producer, okay? Here's a piece, especially for you newbies, all right? Before I talk about the leghorn. This right here is called the earlobe on a chicken. Can you see them? Those on this bird, what color are they? White. They're white. The earlobe will tell you what color of egg a chicken lays. Okay, it's not 100%, I'll give you a couple exceptions, but generally speaking, a white earlobe lays a white egg. A red earlobe, not a brown, but a red earlobe lays a brown egg. So all your, well, I showed you the Plymouth Rock, the Rhode Island Red, uh, the New Hampshire's, the Buckeyes, those are brown egg layers. Now the few exceptions are what we call, you'll see them in these silly poultry uh, catalogs of the Easter Eggers. Araconists and Americanists have red earlobes, but they lay like blue, green, and kind of the different colors of eggshells. Okay, shells, let me clarify. Alright? But what I was going to say, so that's good. Huh? How many of you didn't know that about the earlobe? Very cool. You've got your money's worth. And... So, now the leghorn, the leghorn is an egg producer. So, I want you to see and remember the back half of the bird on an egg producer is most important. Let's just take a few stabs in the air. Why do you think that would matter? <laughs> Okay? We need a little more to be behind on those girls that produce, okay? Because what happens is the more room she has, okay, for her organs that produce those eggs, there's just more room all around for everything to, to work. That's why this is such a 
One of the reasons that's such a phenomenal flock of white leghorns. Now, most of the leghorns that you see that come out of hatcheries and things like this are birds that are maybe half the size of this. Okay? And uh, so a, a good leghorn wolf, they're actually, they got a lot of size and a lot of body, especially the back half. Next slide, Harvey. Two very happy guys holding these outstanding white leghorns. All right, next slide. I want you to see two, all right? This is a, a same breed, two different combs. You want to just make a quick note, there's eight different kinds of combs in the standard of perfection. Eight different kinds of combs. Here's two of them, a single comb and a rose comb. There's single comb white light horns, and there's rose comb white light horns. Okay, now obviously the most popular one is the single comb. Okay, next slide. There's a nice white leghorn male. Okay, next slide. This is a dark brown leghorn. Okay, isn't he a pretty bird? Now this is a flock uh, down in the uh, uh, Bakersfield, California area, but a very, very good flock of dark brown leghorns. Next picture. There's some dark brown females. Next, Harvey. Another one. Keep going. Uh, this is the light brown leghorn. Now, uh, we're working with some phenomenal light brown leghorns, and I, I think the probably two of the best flocks in North America, one is uh, this gal, she's in, actually up in uh, Vancouver, British Columbia. Her name's Heather Hayes. Phenomenal, one of the best light brown leghorns I've ever judged. I judged this bird up in Washington State, and I said, I gotta have some pictures of that. But we also have some of the lines from Don Schreider, who He's been involved in some of our teaching uh, with Center for Poultry and OGS. He was here last year. He's up in Virginia, and we have uh, some of his light brown light bulbs within our network as well. Okay, next picture. This is a buff Orpington. All right? Now, this is a good one. I judged that bird at the Oregon State Fair, and I asked that junior exhibitor, I said, please send me a couple of pictures of your chicken. And uh, this is the female. Next slide. Harvey, there's the male. Now, now these buff Orpingtons are far more massive than the average buff Orpington that comes out of the hatchery. All right, they're a, they're a very large bird, and they and they're an English breed. And what might you know if it's an English breed? What could you figure out? Likes tea. Likes tea. Well, I never have ever heard that. <laughs> Who are you, and where did you come from? You're from Alabama. Are you really? <laughs> you notice she's hiding outside of the door. All right? All of your, the standard is broken into American class. Those birds originated in America. English breeds come from England or, you know, from Western Europe. Okay? Then there's, uh, there's European breeds, uh, the Asiatic classes of the Langshan and the Brahma and so forth. It's, and everything I'm giving you, like, man, this guy just knows his stuff. It's in the book. Just get the chicken Bible and you're all good to go, all right? Next picture. These are, uh, I, I've read some light Brahmas or Brahmas, depending on if you do the cows or not, okay? Uh, and this was a flock that I had uh, of some birds. These, this is an excellent, you see the color uh, and, and just the size of these birds. It's really, really good. Next picture. 